Welcome to my Fallout 76 guide for new players. We're going to start out right here at Vault 76. And the first thing you'll notice is the compass. It's right at the bottom of your screen. And as you can see, you can see that there's a lighthouse not far from where we are. And any areas that you haven't explored yet or discovered, you're going to see with just a straight outline. You saw like a little shack, that's over here. So you can head in that direction and the compass will expand and when you arrive at that location it will tell you you've discovered it. Now the very first location you'll go to when you play the game is the overseer's camp. You're going to arrive down there through the covered bridge. And overseer's camp is where you begin the main mission right here. And the nice thing about this place is it has a weapons bench, an armor bench, and a cook station. There's also a stash box over here. Now your stash box has a weight limit maximum of 1,200 pounds. You may think right now, I will never fill it. Give yourself a few days to a week and it will be filled. Uh, you may want to consider a Fallout First subscription. It gives you a scrap box which you can put all of your junk items in. Now, as a new player, one of the best locations to start off with your first camp is right here at Morgantown. From Fallout 76, you're going to head east and you're going to find the Morgantown train station. Now, I spent the first few months living in this area. Now, each train station has a stash box. It has a vendor bot. There are various ones. There's responders, raiders, etc. They also have these. If you're new to the game, very new, if you, it's tough to do. You get really close to the push pins on the map and you can click on them and they will add that to your map. Now it'll be grayed out until you actually go there, but it's helpful as a marker. The other thing that you'll find in all the train stations are a variety of posters or notes. And these are different at every train station. If you click on them, they're going to send you on a quest. And also each train station, it, it'll be a mix of, this is a chemistry bench, there might be a tinker's bench, weapons bench, etc. Um, and these are great locations to live near because you need to get caps, money, 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 and also knowledge. And that requires you to kill a lot of NPCs, take their loot and scrap it to learn things. And learning is one of the most important things you can learn in the game. Now, right here, I'm going to go ahead and place my camp module right out here on the road. This way I won't lose anything into all of the grass down there. There we go. It's always a good first step. And as you get more involved in the game and purchase more things, you'll get things like log cabin plans, larger uh, fusion generators rather than a little gas generator. You'll have uh, nicer walls and floors and decor for your home. So you really start out with just the basic wood floors and wood walls. You can pick up your camp. You can move it around. And here we go. Now the next step is I raid this place daily. You can change the server, get a whole new set of Scorch to kill, and loot their weapons, junk, ammo, everything. Just do this constantly when you first get in the game to get ahead on learning things. Now back when f you don't need to worry about food and water, those have all been eliminated from the game. I love this location because I can always come here and get free food because the NPCs cannot destroy the crops. The way you learn cooking recipes is actually making them. So if you pick up corn or pumpkins or the potatoes here, go back to your camp and go to the cook stove and make any of these. And as soon as you do it, it usually unlocks a recipe automatically, or you can find recipes in the game. Now here I am getting bothered by a bunch of scorched. These ones are all to your level. In fact, the entire map now compared to the beginning of the game, it's all leveled to your character's level. So I'm almost at 50. Yay. Um, so they're at level the same thing, 49 and 49. They might be up a level or two and the queen and other of the bosses are going to be probably around 100. So 
the reason that you come to this place is they're low level kills. They're not like super mutants or something. So you can collect all of their loot. And I forgot one thing. I have to take a trip back to my health is low. I don't have stim packs. So when I was at Overseers, I forgot to tell you one of the most important plans to pick up and everybody laughs about it is the plan for the bed. And there we go. Metal bed. Grab that plan. And also any junk around here. Junk is money and you need caps all the time to buy plans, to buy everything. You do not need to buy food or water. The other thing you don't want to do is sleep in a sleeping bag because of the diseases your character can get. And they take time to wear away and they can affect your character's uh, special stats. We'll get into that later. So go ahead and sleep in the bed. It'll take a little bit of time. And you should see it in the upper left corner. You will feel well rested. Now, sleeping in the bed will restore your health. It will not get rid of your radiation. You will need right away or a decontamination shower to do that. So let's have a look here. As you can see towards the bottom, you will see very well rested, XP 100% and well rested for the next two hours will give you a 5% bonus to your XP. And the XP helps boost your character's level. I'm at 49, I'm trying to get to level 50 because that's when all either uh, weapons and armorers are at level 45 or 50 at max level. So let's go back here and our next step is to kill some more of these Scorched. And we're here to loot all weapons, ammo, and junk that they are carrying. Now, as you can see in the upper left, all I had to do was crouch. And I get double damage because I'm in sneak. You basically use less ammo. And because you're in a sneak mode, they don't detect you right away. So you've got more time to get closer to them to get a better shot. Okay. Another thing you need to do is if you want to know the damage your weapon is doing, go down to display, the very bottom, you're going to see there it is show damage numbers and it, it can work in nuclear winter or adventure mode, you want to leave those on. And that's going to show you the damage that your particular weapon is doing on an NPC. And if you're not interested in PvP mode, keep pacifist mode on or off, depending on your preference. I'm not going to get into workshops. Workshops are automatic PvP locations. Go ahead, try it out. You can get some fantastic plans. We're going to go into workshops in another episode or possibly later in this episode, depending on how long it runs. Now, you also need to come to this location to continue the main quest line. So you'll be going into the airport building itself. Make sure you look everywhere. There's actually a plan in there for a small backpack, and that can increase your carry weight by 20 pounds. So you can either loot as you go, or I like to clear the area, then go back and loot the individual bodies. At some point, the bodies will deteriorate and they'll turn into either ash piles or meat piles or metal piles. Um, and they're a lot easier to spot on the ground. So go ahead and pick up everything. Now you can go ahead and sell um, the weapons and any junk you have to the vendors. You cannot sell any ammunition. So either keep it all, which I advise when you're a new player, you're going to pick up a variety of guns and you need to find out what kind of play style. Are you going to be a shotgun build? Are you going to be a semi-automatic weapon build, a melee build, automatic weapons, heavy, heavy guns? There's all kinds of things. But when you're just starting off in the game, you're going to find things like combat rifles, shotguns, and pipe weapons. And that is where you'll start to learn all of your mods, your modifications and things. And we'll get into that in a couple minutes. So we finished up here. Let's head back. Oh, wait, we had these guys. Ooh, assault rifle too. 
And as you can see, as I pick things up, my weight is now in the red and I cannot run. My character is overweight. Now you can go ahead, you, you can't sprint, but you can still walk. I know I'm close to the train station, so I can walk over there with everything and start selling or scrapping it. So let me just show you the most important thing that you can build at your camp right now, and that is your stash box. And that will show you, as you can see in the bottom left, I am 300 pounds and my max carry weight is 285. So that's where you can see. Now you can go ahead and store a few things in there so you can run over to the train station and access your stash box there. Um, there's also a membership called Fallout First. And what this allows you to do is store unlimited scrap in this scrap box. There's also a tent that you can drop anywhere on the map and it'll have a scrap box and a stash box in it and a cook stove and a bed and you can move that. That is independent of the camp that you place down and it is around 10 to 13 dollars a month depending on how involved you want to get into the game. So right now we're going to head over here Oh wait, there's a plan at this station. You can, if you don't already know it, you can pick up the plan for a chemistry station, just like the one in front of me. So we're going to go ahead and scrap. Now you can do mass. I want to scrap all the junk because we don't, at this stage, the first time we ran through, we're going to hit Y, scrap all of the junk. So it's going to take all the junk you have, not the weapons and armor, just the junk, and it's going to break it down into individual components. What I'm showing you here is just everything that I have. So when I go ahead and scrap all junk, it's going to scrap like that hammer and everything. It's going to break it down into individual components, and it also will reduce your weight. So if you're stuck, your character's overweight, find a bench, scrap it, all the junk and it will reduce its weight to its, like I said, its individual components. There you can see it's now cloth and steel and wood rather than a hammer and a bucket, that kind of thing. The next thing we can do is store it all. Store all your junk. If you die or if you engage in PvP and you are carrying junk, it drops. It's the only thing that drops upon death is whatever junk you're carrying. So get in the habit. As soon as you're done scrapping, store it. Now the other thing we want to do is go in here and scrap some of these weapons. There we go. And when you do that, you unlock mods. That unlock the heavy mod for the pipe wrench, the combat rifle, the aligned long barrel. This is the knowledge you need. Now, a lot of these can only be learned by scrapping. We call it a make and break. You make a bunch, you break them. You break them down into their components. And again, put it in your stash box. You don't need to remove the junk from your stash box or scrap box to craft something. It's done automatically. Now, go ahead and sell some of your weapons to make some caps. When you're first starting out, like I've said, do half breaking to learn and half selling. I do not advise selling the starred weapons, the one, two, or three star legendaries to the robots. Uh, you will not get very much money at all. And I'm gonna show you in a minute what you need to do with that. Also grab any of the junk in the train station. It costs caps to travel anywhere in the map except for like two to three locations. That's Vault 76, Foundation, and Crater. Those areas are free to travel. So grab as much junk as you can, sell it back to the robots, and there's your fast travel money. And here we go and sell all of that. And now let's go back to those items with this one, two, or three stars on them. Those are legendary items. And you don't want to sell them to the robots. No, no, you don't. You want to keep them. And I'm going to show you what to do with them. You get such a tiny amount of money, almost the same as an assault rifle. Every train station has these legendary exchange machines. This is where you want to exchange them. You're going to sell them to the machine and get scrip. And in the bottom left corner, sorry, bottom left corner on the right side, it says 392. That's the scrip symbol. 
And then the bottom right, I can sell up to 150 per day um, in script. So selling legendaries to the exchange machines to get script. And you're going to see one, two, or three stars. All your one stars, just sell them all. Uh, I'm not going to get into too much detail. There are different kinds like mutant slayers, nocturnal, troubleshooters, two shots, furious, executioners. Basically, anything that you find that's explosive, keep it. Anything that's faster fire rate or faster swing speed, if it's melee, keep those too. In, in armor, you have all kinds, chameleon, hunters, life-saving, nocturnal, weightless, zealots. Collect a bunch and have a look at what each of the first attributes are. That one that I passed that said it had weapon weight reduction, that's really useful. Uh, executioners, killing something, your target is below 40% health. Furious, damage increased after each consecutive hit. All of these are amazing, except for like most people don't use troubleshooters or nocturnal or medics. Vampires will keep you alive. It will slowly regenerate your health as you use it. So that was a vampire's cryolator. When I use that on the queen, I'm regenerating my health. So it's a lot tougher for me to die. So when you have all of your script, right now I'm at 407, you're going to travel over to a location called the Rusty Pick. And it's a little bit south here. It's in the ash heap. There we go, the Rusty Pick. Uh, before we head inside, I just want to show you something really quick. Um, what they call zero boxes. Where it says ice cooler at the bottom of that column, it'll say zero of zero. That means you can store an unlimited amount of items in that box. Say you want to drop something or share something with a friend. This one has a weight limit of 50. So you might only be able to put say two assault rifles in there. So if you and a friend are sharing a bunch of junk or weapons or you're trading, uh, be careful obviously, but it will take an unlimited amount in there. There's also a cigarette machine. That's also a zero box. It can be called a zero box or a world box. Um, if the world crashes and you've left, say, a paper bag on the ground, it's full of junk, it's going to vanish. If you leave it in a machine and you have a friend in the world, you have a chance of both of you getting back in that world to pick up your stuff. So obviously be real careful. This is the purveyor. <laughs> She's either really, really loved or really, really hated. And depending on what you get back when you exchange your script. So I have 407 script. It's not script, it's script. Sometimes I may slip and say script, but it's script. You can purchase from her one, two, or three star legendary weapons and armor. And also, I won't get into it, but legendary modules and vault steel. That's for a later date. So I usually purchase two star legendary ranged weapons. Now, obviously, I got poop. Nobody wants a Berserker's Broadsider. You get a much higher chance to get an explosive weapon when you purchase a two-star legendary ranged weapon than three. And you can buy two or three from her, and chances are, especially if you're a low level, you're going to get an explosive pipe pistol of some kind. Now, the Rusty Pick is a great location to have a camp nearby. Just giving you a quick tour. It has all the weapons benches, also another zero machine here, the cigarette machine, uh, the full three downstairs, and the tinker's bench. And let's have a look at what this can do. This allows you to make all of your ammunition. You can also bulk up junk objects. Chests are related to the mole miner treasure hunter event, and gifts are related to the uh, crafting of Christmas presents. Quest items. There are quite a few quest items that you need to repair or build inside a tinker's bench. So this is a great second camp to have. Uh, if you decide to move, move here. Full complement of benches. You've got a stash box inside. You've got the legendary exchange machine inside. This is a perfect location to have a camp. So let's head back down to the basement and I'll introduce you to the other workstations. 
The chemistry bench allows you to make something important for ammo, and that is gunpowder. You can also make some of the drugs like Psycho. That's the only recipe I've got so far. But any of the recipes you find in the world, you can use here. The only energy ammo you can make is fusion cores. Um, your healing, you can do stim packs, rat away, uh, science project. Smelting. If you find, say, iron ore in the world and you want to make it into steel with a few other components, you can do that right at your chemistry bench. At the armor workstation, you can craft your backpacks all of your armor and outfits say you found a plan for an outfit in the world whether it's a civil war outfit or your hazmat suits uh, your under armors whether you make them shielded or not shielded's the best uh, weapons bench here you can make any melee gun or heavy gun there are some throwing weapons as you learn the plans for these or purchase them, you can come back to your weapons bench and craft them here. And another quick uh, tip, if you're looking for more locations on your map, if you happen to find one of the lookout towers, now I showed you how you can just explore the map just by walking and finding things. You can go to a train station and click on the push pins on the map. If you find a lookout tower, and we're gonna head down to one right now, let's take a break from the crafting benches and things. Let's head down to a lookout tower down in the Cranberry Bog. Most of these areas are usually occupied by some kind of hostile NPC, nothing too, too serious. Just watch out for landmines, punji boards, and the like. They usually have some pretty good loot too. So just make your, your, make your way to the top of the lookout tower. I'm not sure if it's, I think it's a friendly up here. Yep, we're good. So when you get to the top of the lookout tower, also, I can't resist grabbing junk, so just hang on one sec while I grab all of this. Just head out to the edge of one of these towers. You're looking for the survey area. And what it's going to do is it's going to put these new map locations on your map. Now, they're not discoverable in terms of you can fast travel to them. They will be grayed out on your map, but at least it gives you a point of reference and you can explore and walk over to it and then discover the area yourself. So it's another helpful thing to help find, especially in and around congested areas. You can get like right here, I just discovered five new locations. So we've taken a look at how to discover things on the map, how to use the workbenches. Now for the Pip-Boy. You can see here to the right of the helmet, three sets of numbers. That is my character's current damage resistance, energy resistance, and rad resistance. The numbers 45, 67, and 36. As you get better armor, those numbers will rise. The effects tab will show you if I'm addicted to something or whether I have certain mutations. It'll also show you the benefits, the both the positives and the negatives of your mutations. And these are your special stats. This is how you do your build. I am not a build expert. And this section here under collections will show you how many caps, any perk coins you have. Now, sometimes this is not accurate. I don't usually go by this. It'll show you the other uh, tadpole possum badges, gold bullion, and legendary scripts. Uh, this is a new update that shows you some of the things you've picked up recently. Also, your weapons. And my character is currently overweight, 271 carrying of 265. So I'm going to have to either drop a few things like that missile launcher weighs 16 pounds. I think I might have seen a broadsider. So there we go. We're now underweight. And unless you're underweight, you cannot fast travel anywhere. Also, a very important thing to try to get the plan for right off the bat is the plan for the hazmat suit. Most of the vendors sell this plan. It's around 900 caps. But once you have a hazmat suit, you can wade in water. You can go down to the queen or any other uh, events like radiation rumble and not take any radiation damage. Um, certain foods 
and drinks like this black water brew keep a few on you. It can increase your strength, charisma, and intelligence for a short period of time. And the charisma will get you more caps when you sell to a vendor. Now this canned meat stew will boost XP and that is from an event called Feed the People. If that event is up, head over there and get your canned meat stew. It's very important. It'll get your character to level 50 and beyond a whole lot faster. And it lasts, I think, for one hour. And another recent feature that they added to the game was your stack weight. Here I'm carrying 25 Rataways and they are weighing about five pounds. That's not too bad. But when you get into a ton of weapons or like I had the problem with the gunpowder and everything, you'll be able to see where your weight is. Like here with my gunpowder, it weighs 26 pounds. So I either have to drop it or a portion of it or store it. A lot of items like uh, keys and overseer's logs and holotapes and things, they weigh zero, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, under notes, um, actually some of these holotapes here, once you've done the quest and there isn't a quest marker like the ones with the diamond, go ahead and drop them. You don't need them. Um, even though they don't weigh anything, it's easier to find things of value, like say you completed the mission for the Enclave and you have the Missile Silo State Holotape. It's a very important item to keep and to look at and use. What you do is just click on it and it'll tell you the status of all three of the missile silos. These three on this server are all open and available to launch. It'll also tell you what the cooldown time is. So you know, oh, in 15 minutes I can launch a nuke from Alpha. You can also check on the notes. Uh, there was a plan there that I did not know. I read it, it, it vanishes, and you've learned the plan. Here I've managed to acquire some missiles and some cannonballs. So that's also affecting my overall weight. I don't use a, a grenade launcher. Since I can't sell the ammo, I just drop it to somebody or there is an ammo conversion machine. I'm not going to get into that right now, but you can, and it's very complicated. It's so government, it's not funny. You can convert your ammo to a different type. Um, you can also, under data toggle on and off your main or side quests. I prefer to leave everything off except the one I'm actually working on. In this case, see if you've got both, these two are gonna stack up and interfere and put quest markers all over the map and you don't know which one you need to focus on. So like this one here, let's go up to breaking radio silence. Wait a minute, we're going down to dailies. Dailies, you can toggle these on and off also. Just try to keep it down to one. It helps with organizing how you look at the map and how you see a quest marker. You also have your radios and the annoying Rose on her radio. We do not speak of Rose. I was so glad I had to do that quest twice on PC. Okay, so what I've done is I've equipped or toggled on the quest breaking radio silence. I've already done my daily op for the first time. It'll bring up this little window. You can make it active, inactive, or show in your Pip-Boy, whatever you prefer. I'm going to go ahead and fast travel there. You can see the little quest marker. The closest uh, area I've discovered is Watoga. Now, a warning about Watoga. Uh, there will be a quest that pops up called Mare for a Day. Do it. It will turn all of the robots in Watoga that are normally hostile to you, they will all ignore you. They will be non-hostile. So I highly recommend if you're traveling anywhere near Watoga or in and out to do daily ops uh, or any of the, there's quite a few quests that take place in and around Watoga. Go ahead and do a mare for a day. You get a really cool melee weapon at the end. It's not too hard. You battle a scorch beast, bring a couple friends, and Mare for a Day solves all your robot issues here. Now the quest marker has taken us here and you can see it really highlights what elevator button you really need to push too. So that helps when you've got quite a few of these like two or three buttons and you're not sure which one to push. 
and then the quest marker will pick up here a lot clearer. You can see right on the other side of the door in about four feet. And there's your quest. There we go, initiate dodge. Just finish up chatting with him and then we will be finished this quest called Breaking Radio Silence. This is pretty, pretty standard. You go up, you talk to an NPC, get a little bit of information. When the quest is open, you usually get pretty good reward this one unfortunately <laughs> did not give a good reward he talks about giving you this awesome reward and no you'll see what i actually got and here we go the quest completed and that will clear it out of your pit boy and put it into the gray section it's done and you should get a bunch of xp too so i get eight stim packs and a couple rounds of 45 i'm like no 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 that's pathetic he talked about a great reward nope not today. So as I've said, the most important thing in the game is knowledge. Learning how to mod up your weapons, your armor, your power armor to make your character stronger and the ability to carry more weight. There's all kinds of reasons to do this. And like I said, you can either craft these items and break them down or you can find them in the world and scrap them to learn mods. Now, as you saw earlier in the video, we went ahead and scrapped some weapons to learn some random mods. But right now, what I'm trying to show you is how you can do a make and break. You do not need to do these at max level. I'm making these leather left arms and it'll cover everything in the category arms, legs, and chest pieces. Just craft them at level one. Even if you're level 400 and something and you need to know a mod, craft them at the lowest level possible because it uses the least amount of your resources. Now here you can see it's costing a couple of cloth, a couple of leather, and a couple of steel. So you don't want to craft it at level 40, 50 if it's still going to learn the same mod. So low level crafting. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and scrap them. This is called a make and break. Now I definitely, what I'm trying to learn is the deep pockets for leather. So right now, all this character knows is there's some boiled leather. I'm trying to scrap a few of these. And let's see, some brawling. And I've got pocketed. That'll give me five pounds of extra carry weight. But I want deep pockets so each piece can carry 10 pounds. If I learn that mod, I can carry a heck of a lot more. And it makes my character stronger to be able to carry this instead of having to come back to a stash box all the time. So here I am. I am scrapping, hoping that one of the upper left corner mods will kick off that I've learned something. And it doesn't look good. And sometimes you have to do this 10 or 20 times. Up oh, there we go. We unlocked lighter build. So we unlock something. Sometimes every single piece that you scrap, you'll learn something. There I learned treated leather. And sometimes like this, you may scrap 10 or 20 pieces, go back, make a few more. And it's a vicious cycle. Keep an eye on your requirements, your junk level. Because like right after this, I don't want to use up all the steel because I know I'm going to do a make and break on pipe pistols. Um, I'm pretending that, they, well, this is my low level character, even though she's like 45, she hasn't learned anything. She's gone through the quest line, but you don't suddenly get all this knowledge. You have to learn it yourself. Now you can buy a certain amount of plans for the mods from vendors, but not many. You can go ahead, say you want to learn the handmade weapon. You can go ahead, buy the plan for the handmade, and then you're going to have to make them and scrap them to learn the plans. I spent about $900 on the handmade plan. Then I gathered up all my supplies, my junk scrap and everything, and I made a bunch because it doesn't give you the, uh, the plan for the automatic barrel in the game. I have to do a make and break. So after I made about 20 of them, finally I got the automatic barrel. And there I just learned some pneumatic piece uh, mod right there. So it is a junk hog. So keep all of your junk that you find in the world and just set it aside for when you need to do a make and break. Next up, we'll head over to the weapons bench and do exactly the same thing. 
We either can scrap the ones that we found in the world that we didn't sell to the robots, or we can go ahead and do a make on the pipe pistol. That's the one I want to learn today. So my steel, everything is running a little bit low. Same thing, make the lowest level possible there. I just ran out of steel. I think I managed to make like three or four of them. Okay, there are a lot of mods to learn on this. And what I'm looking for is the automatic receiver. I may already know it. I may just be missing the um, materials. Sometimes it gets a little bit confusing, but at least it'll tell you, you know, when you go ahead and make something. Let's see, I know exactly one. Well, I can use that for a little bit more steel in case I need it. I think I already know it. Wow, the plasma cutter had four plans. Well, let's go ahead and scrap that one. That does not have a plan yet. Okay, there we unlocked a standard stock. Precise recoil grip. True grip. And on the last one... I already know the automatic. So let's go ahead and make this automatic. I have enough steel. I'm looking for just a low level, level one automatic pistol. Now these are great things that you can make uh, level one items as you're a higher level character uh, to drop to other players coming out of the vault, whether they're up at the vault or at overseers, that kind of thing. Now there I do have a pocketed leather left leg I made. And that gave me the extra five pounds carry weight. Here I am equipping it and unequipping it. So you can see my 260 carry weight went to 265. So there are a lot of advantages to learning certain things. And here's my little pipe pistol. It's not a bolt action. So it's a nice little automatic to use for the game. So hopefully this has all helped you guys out. We've covered exploration, all the weapon benches, uh, how to do make and breaks and learn things. Uh, possibly seeing how the how this video is received, I may continue on with a second one. But until then, have fun exploring the wasteland.